Hi, I'm Vicky reporting for Winkle and I'm here with the wonderful Rasha. How are you? Thank you. I'm very good. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Thank you for talking to us. Thank you for coming and talking to me. <laughs> So first of all, your Sudanese music, you bring loads of different aspects, you know, Arabic poetry, Sufi, hints of reggae. What aspect would you say is the most challenging? For me, the, the combination of things I am doing are okay for me because they are the part of Sudan that are more accessible to me. But then Sudan is huge and it's really full of different cultures and different languages and different rhythms and different you know styles so there's so many of them that I cannot really do you know because maybe because of the language not so much because of the language but there are rhythms that I'm not really used to maybe or you know what I mean so not the ones I am doing but other ones that I, I didn't I haven't yet at least I'm, I'm planning to try some <laughs> yeah, yeah. And specifically, your songs that you have, I mean, they tell traditional tales and anecdotes from all over Sudan. What would you say is your favorite song to sing? My favorite song to sing? This is a really difficult question. There's so many, actually. But maybe if we're talking about tales or a song that would tell a story, uh, there is Azar al Hay, maybe, is, is one of them. Mm -hmm. Because it tells of a, a story of a, of a guy who's in love and he cannot see his beloved, and, and he'll talk to her girlfriends and try to deal with them so they can bring her to him or whatever, you know. So it's so nice. It's a love story that's, that's a difficult love, a little bit. Yeah. And, and the guy is so into it, and, you know. So I, I like this one. That sounds beautiful, so poetic as well. It is, it is, it is. So you're a dedicated humanitarian. Would you say there's an overall message that you bring to your creation of music? Well, I, I, I do my part. I, I try at least. Like, for example, this time I'm here, um, apart for uh, being invited by the Major of London to this festival of Eid uh, and so on, I'm also sponsored by Forward. This is an organization that's working to end the FGM, you know, female genitalian mutilation. And uh, like this is an issue that would really interest me to work on with, with, with them. You know what I mean? So these kind of things. Now, in my music, I uh, some of my songs, they have messages that are humanitarian or for, for equality or for justice or for uh, against racism or ca these kind of things. But I think for whatever, love and fun and, you know, my songs are really varied in messages. Yeah. Well, some of those issues are, are things that need to be addressed anyway, so that's perfect. Yes, yes, of course. And I think we have, like artists, we have this opportunity because we have a, have a platform and and I think it's it's part of our our I don't know I think it's part of our job to to, to focus on these kind of things or at least mention them or let people know about them like raise awareness you know yeah your voice complements a number of different instruments what would you say the specific musical instrument that's picked up your music unlike any other I think first of all the oud the, the, Sudan, the Arabic and Sudanese load because uh, this is how I started singing with my brother Wafi with my sister Afaf uh, back in Sudan but then uh, the sax too because the sax with the load that the gives me this uh, mixture of my own culture my own background musical background with the jazz and with the fusion with the other, other stuff that I want to experiment with you know Yes. And since your first album in 1997, Sudanyat, would you say your music has adapted or changed in any way? Uh, I'm sure it is. Uh, I cannot tell you how, in w which way, but uh, yeah, because that was a long time and yeah. we all evolve, you know. Like, for example, when I started, I was really into uh, the mixing mm -hmm. of, of sounds and uh, different mm -hmm. cultural uh, backgrounds in my music now I still do that and I'm still interested in that but uh, I'm also more interested lately on <laughs> that's my bad <laughs> they're doing things to me <laughs> so I'm interested in going back to my roots too like because 
of what I said before, Sudan is huge and I really don't know everything in Sudan, you know, the, musically. So I'm really interested in that too, exploring all these parts I, I, I didn't know about in Sudan, you know. Yeah. yeah. It's a completely learning and educational experience that we get to enjoy. Yes, it is, it is actually. And it never ends, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> Please tell me about your dress, you look absolutely wonderful. <laughs> okay, well, this is my own design, first of all. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I think the white is... Uh, really representative of Eid because this is the occasion of the of the festival and also all the hairstyle and these beads and stuff they are really typical African but also in Sudan we use a lot of them you know and uh, in in in, in uh, West Sudan Southwest Sudan there are a lot of tribes who they would you know the Fulani uh, all over Africa the we have those people in Sudan too, and I think uh, they have a really beautiful aesthetics. So I was just trying to do something to, you know, to remind of, of these people. Yeah. Well, it looks stunning. Thank so. you. And finally, last question, what does Eid mean to you? Eid means uh, the coming together, the family, the kids. Really, that's it for me. A part of a, a religious celebration and a part of its in the end of Ramadan, after all the fasting and the, the spiritual month that people have had, then the end of it, it's celebration. It's really familiar celebration. And it's a, a happy occasion for kids. So I always remember Eid as a kid. And I still have this feeling about it till now. <laughs> well, thank you so much for sharing your memories and talking to us today. Thank you. I hope your performance goes well. I hope so too. Thank you so much for having me.